Welcome to the Rise to Thrive podcast. Rise to Thrive is your real talk resource to elevate your life and business through growth, wellness, and manifestation. With your co-host, Linda Tate, financial advisor turned life and wealth strategist, founder of Leela Life, and self-named Nordic Shaman, and Amelia Travis, yoga teacher turned multi-six-figure business coach, founder of Stoked Yogi, and spiritual warrior. We're here to help you level up and create the life you imagine, sharing inspiration and strategy to elevate vibes and consciousness so you can rise to your best self and thrive as your best self. Tune in weekly to Thrive Daily. Tuning in now. It's 2019 and your investments can be in alignment with the world you are creating. Change Finance is not your normal Wall Street company. They are woman-owned and offer investments that change the world. Go to change-finance.net slash mbty to learn more and start investing today. Change Finance is a registered investment advisor. This is not an offer to buy or sell any product. What's up, what's up, friends? Welcome back to Rise to Thrive podcast with your hosts, Linda Tate and Amelia Travis. And today, bringing you such a special guest, an incredible woman, Naya Kete. Welcome to the show, Naya. Thank you so much for having me. Welcome. Friends, Naya, if you are not familiar with her, get ready to have your world rocked. Naya Kete is Um, an incredibly gifted lead singer of pop reggae band Stay Real, songwriter and producer, champion and advocate for equality, and a women's empowerment coach. She is a woman who has made an impact on my life through the gift of her healing sound. Um, And just her presence is such such an empowering experience just to be around you, Naya. (laughs) That's so sweet. Thank you so much for that reflection. I love it. Yes. So we're super excited to welcome you to the show today and to talk about what your experience has been as a creative female entrepreneur in the landscape of music um, and how you've really been able to cultivate and trust in your own integrity in an industry that isn't always super friendly um, or isn't always cheering you on to really be your best self. So super excited to unpack that. But before we do, we'd love for everybody to, to get to know you a little bit. Yeah, I'm, I I would love to share a little bit about myself. So there you go. <laughs> cool. Well, t- t- take it away. We'd love to hear, you know, the show is called Rise to Thrive. We'd love to hear about your story of how you came to rise to thrive in, in music and, in, and where you are right now. So it's actually such a perfect question right now because it's more and more become a practice that I do daily where it's, there's, it, there hasn't just been one time in my life where, uh, where I'm rising to thrive. It's actually a practice that I do every single day. And we just released a song about it. My band Say Real, our first single from our upcoming album is called Catching Sunlight. And that really, for me, tells the story about just kind of that daily, I mean, it, some days it feels like more of a struggle than others, but it is a, it, it's a choice that you have to make every single day to um, feel all of the emotions that come with being a human being and to choose to embrace them so that you can really live a life where you feel like you're thriving and not just surviving. So for me, what that looks like is making sure that I'm doing the things that I have to do to take care of my physical well-being, my mental well-being, my creative well-being. Um, It means when I have to cry, I really allow myself to cry. It means when I'm feeling angry, I really allow myself to be angry. And when I'm feeling joyful, I really allow myself to be joyful. And embracing all of those emotions is part of what uh, is part of that process. Feeling all the feelings. <laughs> oh my God, we love you so much. You're so, it was, uh, that's just like our favorite thing I think to talk about is the power of like being in your authentic experience. And in, you know, we just finished recording an episode about trusting yourself and about how women are socially and culturally conditioned to not trust their bodies, to not trust their feelings, to not trust their desires. 
And um, it's just so good to hear you say that, like right off the bat, that for you, it's a daily practice of trusting yourself, trusting your authentic experience that you're having. And that's really what enables you to feel like you're thriving. Exactly. Was there a pivotal point in time where you realized, I need to do this work, or were you always good at it? Yeah. <laughs> Um, no, I was not always good at it. I mean, I was, I think I, what I will say is that I was lucky enough to be raised in a family and, and by a woman, you know, I was raised by a mother who was really just conscious of conscious living, you know? And, and so I always had an awareness that there was, you know, that you create your own experience and, um, and that you always have the choice to have it be a joyful one or a not so jo joyful one. So, so I will say that. Um, that being said, moving to Los Angeles for me, from coming from the East Coast originally and coming from such a tight knit community was a really pivotal moment in time where all of a sudden I was thrust into this world that I felt just really small in and unseen in. And I had to figure out how to navigate that and how to still feel like myself when the world was just so big and vast around me. And, um, and so, for, so moving to LA was pivotal for me. And then I, the first few years, I lost myself a little bit, you know, I felt more and more disconnected to self the first few years that I was out here. So when I realized that I, I had gained a lot of weight, I probably gained like 35 pounds or something like that. And um, I, uh, I was on The Voice, which was like a crazy experience. And I was touring a lot and releasing a lot and just was, well, I woke up one day and I was like, this is not me. Like, not only do I not feel like myself in my physical being, but I'm not, uh, I'd had this experience where the music that I was writing was not the music that I wanted to be performing. And it was like this weird, I was like, what's going on here? So um, uh, I'd say it was probably in the last like five years that I kind of went from, you know, okay, oh my God, I don't feel like myself. I'm in this city and it's so big. And where am I? to, you know, okay, I have to figure, I have to prioritize self again. And, and, and then it was, and then it was realizing, oh, I can't just, this doesn't just happen overnight. Like this is something that happens every single day that I have to make the choice. Um, so yeah. That's so huge. So Naya, how old were you when you came to the West coast from the East coast or when you decided like, I'm going to do this thing, I'm going to LA and I'm going to, I'm going to make it as a musician. I was 20. It was right before my 21st birthday that we moved in. It was actually on my brother's birthday that we moved into our first apartment. And I turned 21 um, a month later and I'm 29 now. So almost a decade that you've been navigating this landscape that is, you know, the music industry, the entertainment industry. And you touched on it a little bit. Um, I would love to hear a little bit more about that experience of disconnect of, of feeling like, you know, you said you were on The Voice. Can you tell us a little bit about what was that experience like? Yeah, it was um, a million different things. It was super fun and, and it was great. It was not long after I moved to LA that, um, that I was on the show. It was just a couple years in, in. So I, it was, it was like a whirlwind and I felt really fancy and like, oh my God, I'm on TV and you know what I mean? So it was all of those things, but it was also like totally overwhelming, totally stressful. You know, it was weird for me to be on stage and sing singing somebody else's music. That was not a thing that I was used to. And so not only was I singing somebody else's music, but it, it wasn't even particularly songs that I would have chosen to sing myself. So I was navigating that. And, and then I, I like to say that the first few years of me being in Los Angeles, I was kind of like this sponge where I was really, really open to everybody who was in my life because I, I, I like really wanted to be great. You know, I wanted to be a great artist and a great performer and, you know, a badass touring musician. And I felt like everybody around me knew better than I did. And so I, I was like, 
at the time, I just felt like, oh, you're being humble. You're, you know, you're letting people tell you what to do and how to look and you're trusting that it, that, that, that they have your best intention or, you know, your best self in mind. And they did that. That was the funny thing. Like the people around me really like wanted the best for me, but the problem was I, I never gave myself permission at that time to be the authority on myself. I let, I gave my authority to everybody else around me. And so after a while, like I said, I just slowly started to lose myself. And so it was, it taught me a lot about how to really, really own who it is that you are, what that looks like, like literally physically what that looks like. And then also what that sounds like and what that message is. Um, the part, part of that experience was being on the show and 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 not being true to myself. <laughs> the the contrast, right? Oh, it's man. like who who are you and who do I not want to be and who do I want to be? Yes. Exactly. What you said, we just unpacked this on an episode uh, talking about trusting yourself and and how prevalent this um sense of others know better, others know best, others know better than I do for myself and how that's just not not true. Did, did you have one specific experience of like awakening in that? Or do you feel like it was kind of, I'd love to hear about that. I did. And it sounds really silly when I think about it, but it was so real for me. So the, um, the makeup and hair on when I was on the voice, they were such a sweet team of people. And at one point they had created this look for me, like, spent hours doing my makeup and doing my hair and creating this look. And I remember like looking in the mirror and being like, Hmm, that's weird. Like, I don't feel like I look like that, you know, but everybody around me was like, Oh my God, you look amazing and blah, blah, blah. And I was like, okay, all right, I'm going to do this. Cool. It's all good. And then I didn't see myself the rest of the day and I was just doing the interviews or whatever was going on. But then months later, you know, it was probably, four or five months after that happened that I actually got to see the episode where they had created this look. And I just remember looking at myself on TV and being like, what the heck were you thinking? Like, that is not you. And I think it sticks out in my mind. It's so visceral because it was, it was, I, it was how I looked. You know what I mean? Like, it's one thing when you feel a certain way. It's another thing when you or even listening to myself sometimes, like I, I feel like my voice, like is, is always an expression of myself. Like I can't, I can't, I can't walk away from it. Um, but when I was looking at me and it wasn't me, that was like, so real <laughs> say what it was so real. And so I just remember being like, okay, can't ever do that again. Like every time you leave the house, you have to make sure your style is an expression of who you are, what you're, what you're speaking about is an expression of who you are, what you're singing about is an expression of who you are. And I just remember being like, yeah, no, never again, <laughs> never again. You got to own it. <laughs> are there other areas in your life that you could relate that parallel to? Ah, that's funny that you say that. Um, I have this experience um, every month, right around the same time every month when I go to the gym and I always work out in the mirror. So I'm always looking at myself in the mirror and there's a special time a month where all of a sudden I'm like, hmm, you look different today, you know? <laughs> And um, is there a special time of month or do you mean that in like a negative way or like no, just a different, no, just a different way. It's like at, for a while it, it felt negative. You know, there was a period of time, um, where it felt negative to me, but now I just, I look at myself and I'm like, Oh, okay. You look different. You look fuller. You look more flushed. You look whatever. And, and I, and I, and it's, and it's, um, I love, I love working out when I'm in that state actually, because 
it allow I I have this feeling of fear a little bit. I remember like, oh, I don't feel like myself, but then I push through that and I like sweat it out. And it's such this beautiful moment of just like embracing who I am in that moment and being really physically in my body with that and being at peace with that. And um yeah, I so I go through that often. <laughs> I I love, I love that, you know, what you just described is um, an experience of finding embodiment when it sounds like you maybe were like more in your head. Yeah. Um, do you feel like embodiment is an important practice in your creative expression, in creating your music? Do you find that, you know, you have the need to get into your body? And if yes, what do you do to do that? Yes, absolutely. Um, so working out, dance, yoga are all practices for me that I need, <laughs> that I need every, you know, I have to do some kind of really, not just movement, but I have to sweat a lot. I'm one of those people, if I'm going to get up off the, like, I love laying down and I love lounging around, but if I'm going to get up, like I need to, I need it to be intense. And so I've studied African dance. I love salsa dancing. I love um, doing hot yoga. Um, and I love working out and, um, and for me, that's, that has been such a, a beautiful way of being connected to my spirit through my body is really through the movement. It's through, it's when I'm moving that I feel most connected to like my infinite self, my, my expanded, my expansive self. Um, and that being said, there's this really cool thing that's been happening as I've gotten, you know, I feel like I'm in the best shape of my life at this point when I knew I had to lose a bunch of weight and, and then I did. And now I'm like, Oh my God, I'm like, as I'm getting older, I'm like, I'm feeling stronger than ever. Um, and as I know, as that's happening, I notice my performance changing. I notice every time I have to, uh, like hit a high note or every time I feel like I'm losing my breath a little bit, I squat I like get into this deep squat and all of us, and I connect like to my root, to my womb and all of a sudden I, it's effortless. And I just discovered that probably in the last couple of months and it made so much sense to me just based on who I am and, and, and the, and the connectedness to, that I have to my body and to movement that getting down, that not just, not just moving, not just dancing. Cause I've always danced on stage, but getting down and feeling connected to the getting earth. down, <laughs> but really, no, it, it is so important. And this connection to your root and to your pelvic floor and to your womb space as women is so neglected and it's so freaking important. And whether you find that connection through orgasm or through doing squats or through doing kegels or through doing low belly breathing, like whatever, whatever way you find it, I fully, I fully agree and want to celebrate that and hope that listeners that you guys are hearing that because it's something that I think we just don't, I don't know, you don't know until you know, and really it's best learned through experimentation, but like, I mean, yeah. also it like gives a definition to core that we're not used to hearing. Like truly what is core, the space from your shoulders to your, you know, booty. <laughs> your knee. Some people say knees really, but yeah, I mean, I think that, I think that activation is so cool. And I remember when I was getting ready to have my son, you know, it was like, if I did nothing else, my midwife and, and doula and other women were like, just do squats. Like that's all you need to do in a day is like, make sure you're doing, you know, a hundred squats if you can or whatever you can do. And, um, and I remember the point in labor where it was like transition where all of a sudden you know, the baby is moving down and like involuntarily going into this like power squat that you're talking about, Naya, and letting out a roar that was like a bear. And it was like, man, we can pull so much, so much power from that. So embodiment, hot tip of the day, <laughs> squat, squat. <laughs> squeeze your lady, lady, bar lady parts. Oh my God. It's so real. It feels so good. I can't eat. It's like, it just feels so good. <laughs> So I love that, um, that tip for embodiment. And I think that sounds like that's one of the ways that you help move into your creative expression. Um, you know, a lot of our listeners are creative entrepreneurs. Um, they're artists, they're people who understand 
the importance of tapping into creative flow for whatever you're creating in your life. It doesn't even have to be art and music. Maybe you're creating a family or creating, um, you know, a garden. a garden. Sure. So what are your, what are your, uh, essentials, whether those are activities or, you know, foods or whatever, what do you do to get into the creative flow? Um, uh, first and foremost is outdoors like just being outside. My favorite places to be are hiking on a mountaintop or by the ocean or in Joshua Tree. I love the desert and I love climbing rocks and this and just um, so that is first and foremost probably <clears throat> uh, the most inspiring. Um, I also like, I don't know why, but I get so much inspiration when I'm driving. <laughs> When I'm on my own, I don't know, there's just something about just an open road and now being in LA traffic, I just envision an open road, <laughs> just, just the movement and just, you're just like, you're just very much in the world. I don't know how to explain it, that, but that really, I've, I've, I've come up with so many, uh, not just ideas for song, but so many ideas uh, for my business and, and, and all that kind of stuff just in the car when I'm driving. So just going into that is, um, next time you, next time you're in the car for a long trip, see what happens. If you set that intention to be open to the creative mind. I'm with you on that. Mine is airplanes though. Like literally on airplanes, forget about it. I will get, I will just download, like I can open my computer and like the full next program I'm going to launch or chapter of my book or whatever, it just comes through. Yeah. I've had a few good car rides myself where it's just like flowing through. Yes. I love it. Um, and then there's two more things that I, that come to mind and, um, collaboration is one really having people like go to people in my life that I just know are, you know, bring out the best in me or we bring out the best in each other is really important. Um, and finally quiet, like just really making room for quiet time, which has actually been a hard one for me because I used to be really afraid of being alone. <laughs> and so it's taken me some time to, to really embrace that and feel not just comfortable in that, but inspired in that. Um, but, uh, yeah, just quiet time. <laughs> Do you, I, Naya, you mentioned earlier about with your movement and um, like awareness of your cycles, but do you find yourself cycle aware in your life for creativity purposes? Uh, yeah, I do. That's a great question. I do. Um, you know, as an independent artist, you wear so many different hats. You know, you're not just a songwriter and performer. You're a content creator and a marketer and a booker of shows and, you know, all of this different stuff. And so for a while, I just was like trying to do everything all at the same time. And I, I noticed that I was never able to be consistent in any one area because every time I tried to take it all on, I would be like great about it for a month. And then I would like burn out completely. And so what I started doing was looking at my life almost like like looking at at the full year and being like okay the, at, for this part of the year I'm going to be writing and in the studio and like really connected to my just to my to my passion that is music and to source and to just the flow of that and so there's a certain time of the year when I when I intentionally you know set that up. And then there's another time of the year when I'm uh, setting myself up to be successful in the world. So I'm, cre I'm like in business mode and planning mode. And that's also a, a creative energy as well, but it's just a different kind of creative energy. I'd say that's the point where a lot more collaboration comes into place for me. And so, you know, I'm setting up the timeline of when we're going to release singles and I'm creating the music videos and I'm doing stuff like that. And then there's another time of the year where we're just in the world and we're just performing. And again, that's a different kind of creative energy. Um, but yeah, so I kind of, so I, so I'm, I'm really intentional about it. Um, but 
it's definitely helped me to, uh, to, uh, make the most of that time, you know, it to help me to be able to be like, all right, now I'm just, you know, when it's recording time, I'm just fully in that songwriting and recording place. When it's planning mode, I'm fully in that business head and mindset. When, when it's time to perform, I'm fully able to perform and, and, uh, and it helps me to just anchor things in a different way. I am such a huge fan of this um, emphasis on seasonality in business and life. It's something that I teach all of my clients, and maybe you teach this to your clients too, but I would, I would love to know. I'm just curious about the correlation. What season for you is the time in the studio? What season is touring? What season is, is the business creation? Can you make that correlation pretty definitively or does it vary? It, I mean, it varies a little bit just based on, um, you know, gig opportunities and things like that. But what I, if I had it my way, what I love is I love um, the fall and winter being the time when I'm in the studio creating, I'm in my own hub. I just, I love, I'm, I'm somebody who loves the rain. I love, I'm somebody who loves changes in season. It's, it's interesting that I live in Los Angeles, but <laughs> That's <laughs> just um, so that's so that's the time when I'm when I'm in um, in the uh, songwriting process and recording mode, and then come you know end of winter, moving into spring is when I'm planting seeds and I'm planning and I'm setting myself up to be reintroduced to the world because every time I create a new project, I kind of reintroduce a new part of myself to the world. And then, um, you know, end of spring into summer and then beginning of fall is when I'm really putting it out there and in performance and touring. And that's when I, when I have it my way, that's how I like to do things. <laughs> I think that's so relevant to people, no matter what industry you're in. And I'm like nodding my head along. You guys can't see, but as Naya's talking, I'm just over here nodding because yes, I feel this in my bones and I feel this in my business and owning it is so freaking powerful. Being willing to, uh, to move with this cycle instead of trying to fight against it. Uh, you know, I have the same thing where when it comes into winter time, I want to be more introspective. I want more solitude. I want to take that period to be really being creative and creating what I'm going to release. And sometimes it's usually around like early February, all of a sudden there's this kind of switch that's flipped and it's like, okay, I'm ready to like be out there, you know, start to, um, create structure, start to create plans. And then like around this, where we are right now, like late spring, it starts to feel like, okay, let's get out there and let's do these events. It's the summer of life. You know, you've got all of this vibrant energy. Yeah. And what's really cool is as women, we actually go through that cycle every single month, really every single moon cycle. Um, I think even when you're beyond your menstruation years, I think this is still happening on a, on a, um, on an emotional and a mental level. And when you're willing to work with it, it just creates so much more like grace and ease in your life because it gives you permission to be in those times of introspection and solitude and quiet without feeling like you're missing out or you're blowing an opportunity or whatever, but really recognizing like, hey, this, this winter season, whether that's you know one week of your period or whether it's the actual physical winter or whether it's just a winter that you're choosing to take in your business is so necessary like you have to have that time of letting things fall and letting things die and you know before you can really like i i love that you equated it to being reborn every time you're reintroducing yourself to the world it's a new you are a new you and I know Linda loves that. Happy new day. Happy new day. <laughs> new you every day. Happy new day. <laughs> oh man. So that's really, so that those are awesome. I think, you know, tips to get into the creative flow and understanding seasonality and in your and pausing creative to think expression. About, I'd say for a moment, just like, are there ways to start creating these seasons of your life? Are there areas and different activities you enjoy more than others at different periods of time, doing a few moments of your own lifestyle design to our listeners to, to create in a different way that they might not have given them a ch themselves a chance to because of rigidity or systems or constructs that they could graduate from. Hmm. So 
I am somebody who always follows my bliss. <laughs> That's like, even when I'm creating to-do lists, right? Like I always start with which one of these tasks is going to give me the most joy right now. And that's how I check off to do lists. Right. And, um, so there's always an ongoing, so I have like my daily to do list, but then again, I kind of have my yearly to do list and there's an ongoing list of things that I want to make sure that I get a chance to do every year. And that is, you know, one of those things are just, uh, time away time. I said, one of my favorite places to be is Joshua tree. And I love camping and, um, and just like being in the world in such a way where I disconnect, I unplug and I let my phone die and <laughs> I leave my laptop at home and I'm just in the world. Um, and then, uh, salsa dance. I mentioned salsa dancing before salsa dancing, whenever I want to go salsa dancing, I always know that it's a point in time where I like want to meet new people and I want to put myself out there in a different way. And so I know when I'm, whether it's, uh, whether the desire to dance comes first or whether I'm just like, oh, I need to be out in the world. I want to meet, I want, I want there, I want to grow my community is really, is really the, um, the feeling that, that I associate with it. Um, that's one of the things that I do. Uh, what's something else? Um, running. So I love, uh, I love being in the gym and I do that, uh, often I'm, I'm at the gym four or five days a week, but when I'm running, that's a, that's a point in my life where I, I tend to be more meditative. I, I've had an interesting relationship with meditation for my life. And for some reason, running for me is, is, uh, something that, um, what do I want to say? It jump starts a new commitment to meditation. So I know when I'm in a running mode, I need to be more, uh, just, just really connected to, to, uh, to my, my, um, not my infinite self. What's the word I'm thinking of? just the quiet me. <laughs> I told, I told you before being quiet was something I used to be really afraid of. And, and every time I'm in a, in a running mode, I know like, okay, this is a time where I have to be in, you know, just quiet and connected to self in that way. Um, so those, yeah. So there are certain, I guess what I'm saying in answer to your question, there are just certain things in my life that I associate with different aspects of my being. And and I know that there, that those things will bring that out, you know? So when I'm really searching, when I'm, when I'm wanting to put myself out in the world in a different way or grow my community, I know I got to go salsa dancing. When I want to have a recommitment to meditation and to the quiet mind, I know I got to go running, you know, different, when I want to unplug from the world and just reconnect to nature, I know I got to go camping, you know, like all This that is so cool, Naya, because you're talking about neurogenesis. You're, like you're talking about, um, I know, it's like so fancy, but, but actually the, uh, the nervous system connections that are made and like the correlation between them. I'm super excited about this right now. Cause as I'm, I'm, I'm rehearsing for my first TEDx speech. Right. Mm -hmm. And I received this advice to go walk every day with my speech notes and be reciting it, practicing it as I'm walking. And it's so incredible because I just did this yesterday for the first time and I walked for about an hour and I ran through this speech three times. And by the third time, one, it was like, as I walked, the words just started to come, but also like the energy that was then infused into what I was saying was such a like higher level. So I love that this idea of like, running serving meditation or salsa serving human connection and starting to recognize like this is an embodied expression of a desire you know for maybe something that i want to be experiencing on a mental or an emotional or a spiritual level and and how cool to recognize that you have these this tool of your body that you can then use to serve those aspects of self i think that's just like freaking rad yeah. Then the energy creating energy, like motion creates motion. I think so often it's easy to get in a rut. And one of the first go-tos I like to look at is like, when's the last time I've sweat? And if it hasn't been within the past three days, it's like, that's an obvious place where if I just move in a meaningful way, I'm going to feel like everything starts to flow again. Yes, absolutely. 
I would love to ask you, you know, for everyone who's listening, who hears like, oh man, here's this brilliant, you know, successful uh, musical artist and she was on The Voice and she's doing what I want to be doing, right? On some level for them, can we have a moment and talk about what's, what's the hardest part about the life that you're living right now to kind of acknowledge the people who they want to be where you are. Mm -hmm. And maybe can we, can we have a little moment of truth telling about like, I mean, we're hearing all of the beauty of it and we're hearing the choice, you know, that you're following your bliss and that you're choosing to rise to thrive every day and that you're choosing to be aware of your emotions. What's the shadow? I mean, having to make the choice. <laughs> right. Yeah, for all of us. Yeah. I, you know, every single day I'm confronted with, um, physical, mental, emotional challenges, whether it's, um, I don't feel good about myself today. I don't feel beautiful. And yet I have to go sing or I have to go, you know, on camera or I have to go audition for something or whatever, you know, it's like when you don't feel good and you've got to do it anyway, that is, that is tough. Um, dealing with the realities of uh, financial inconsistency and how to move through that and make sure that your financial well-being is is strong and safe and that you feel grounded in it is really hard when you're an independent musician and you're creating all of your own income yourself. <laughs> you know, it can feel really, really scary. Um, I, I find this is not, not something that I've talked about all that much, but I definitely talk about it with my partner and bandmate Lee, how it can be really difficult and this isn't just for independent musicians, but I think for entrepreneurs in general, when you have so many choices, like you, we wake up every day and we can, I can literally do whatever I want. And so on some level that sounds really great. And then there are other times where I'm like, I kind of wish that I could just like go somewhere and clock in and get paid and then come home and then not have to think about whatever I did that day. You know what I mean? Like that there's, there's like a stability in that and a security in that, that some, that sometimes I wish I had, like sometimes like you have so many choices that you have no idea what is the best one. And it's so easy to second guess yourself. Like today, should I be in the studio or should I be going to some networking event or should I be auditioning for something or should I be trying to get coaching clients or like, I mean, and any of those things are valid. <laughs> the tornado of overwhelm swoops in. Yeah. So that is just like, it's so, I mean, I could talk about the shadow side forever. <laughs> Um, but, uh, but yeah, I mean, it's, you know, that's part of what strengthens your resolve is just, is having all of that, you know, is going through all of that and still making the choice to rise, to rise, to thrive, still making the choice to follow your bliss, still making the ch your choice to do the most joyful thing on the to-do list that day. Um, it's, it's, it's constant. It's constant. And the final thing I'll say too, is like, is just burnout. Like, I, for me, I think the thing that I struggle with the most, and I don't know if this is what everybody struggles with the most, but what I struggle with the most is just mental and physical exhaustion, especially on days where I've got so many things back to back to back and going into it. I'm very logical about things where I, when, when I, when I, um, time things out. I'm like, okay, I can do this from this time to this time. And then I'm going to go and do that from that time to that time. And, you know, I can make it all fit. I'm good at that. I can totally make it all work. And then on a day like that, halfway through the day, I'm like, oh shit, I, I just did an entire day and now I have an entire day more to do. And, oh yeah, I have a gig tonight. You know what I mean? Oh, and where I, where, where's lunch? Yeah, exactly. So like, just figuring out how to stay energized on days like that, where I'm literally up from sunrise to after most people go to sleep. If I have got have the show that day is, has been for me just a, a really, really big thing and pacing and breathing and taking those moments of quiet when I can is so important to, uh, to keep the, the fire stoked. <laughs> You mentioned one of your singles that are coming. Um, what's next for Say Real? So um, one, the song that I wanted to talk about that I'm 
was probably one of my favorites on the record is a song called All My Sisters, which is going to be released uh, mid-July, July 17th. And it's about, it's actually not just about women's empowerment and women. It's really about the magic that happens when we all support each other and, um, and, and the divine feminine in all of us, men and women alike. And so I'm just so excited to, uh, to have a song where that gets to be the talk, <laughs> you know, where that's what we get to talk about. Um, this is one of my favorite things to talk about. So I'd love to hear you describe it in your own words. You know, we, we had a, a chat recently on, um, on this episode about trusting yourself where we talked about masculine energy and feminine energy and the divine masculine and divine feminine and masculine genius and feminine genius. So when you say, you know, the divine feminine that's in all of us, not just women, what does that mean to you? What qualities are expressed through the divine feminine? Mm. Um, There's, I, I'm like, I'm very contemplative about this question because sometimes it's hard for me to really define feminine and masculine, like to put it into words. It's more of a feeling to me. Like there's, there's certain times where I'm sitting with somebody and whether they're male or female, there's an energy that they have that feels a little bit more f- feminine or there's an energy that they have that feels a little bit more masculine or for myself there are certain days or certain times where energetically i have to tap into more of my divine feminine or my divine masculine depending on the setting and what i the different kinds of resolve i need to have um but for me divine feminine is she's a listener she's really open and uh, connected to her feelings and to her emotions. She's supportive. She's all about like inclusion and embracing and holding space for you to be exactly who it is that you are and to champion that. Um, Divine feminine is, will lift you up when you feel like you can't when you feel like you can't move anymore, you know, and she'll do it the, you know, with so much love and gentleness and she's old, but she's also a fighter too. Like she's, um, she's had to stand up for herself in ways that nobody should have to stand up for themselves. And she's done it over and over and over and over and over again. Um, I don't know. Those are just a few things that come to mind. I got full body chills as you said that last part. And it's just almost a a physical connection to the generations and generations of women who have gone before, who have, whether silently or not, endured such great hardship and, and just continued, you know what I mean? And continued and and continued to support each other and continued to build community and continued to birth children and continue to feed families and continue to, to nourish the earth and all of this. So I th- want to thank you for that channeled expression because I think it was coming from, it was coming from beyond. Mm-hmm. Um, this has been such a beautiful, uh, illuminating conversation. And I know that, um, that our listeners, I'm sure, will want to connect with you further, whether they're interested in pursuing uh, coaching with you or in listening to more of your music. What's the best way for people to to get in touch, to find out more about what you're doing and what Say Real is doing and possibly work with you? Yes. So my most active channel is my Instagram. It's at Naya Kete, N-A-I-A-K-E-T-E. Um, if you're wanting to know more about the music, if you're interested in coaching, um, or if you just need a little bit of inspiration every day, um, come and visit my feed, shoot me a DM. I run it myself. I'm totally active on it daily. And, uh, and I'd love to connect with you. Thank you so much. That was a long pause. You guys can find that info in the show notes. Um, You can connect with Naya on Instagram. 
And, um, and Naya, we like to do a book club every week. So we love to hear what, what you're reading or what you've read in the past that, um, that might inspire or engage our listeners. So feel free to share more than one if you've got more than one, but take us to the book club. Yes, I love it. Okay. So um, my favorite book of all time that I read probably once a year is The Red Tent. Talk about divine feminine. It's like Oh my gosh, I just love that book so much. And I, and I have a younger sister. She's um, fifteen. She'll be sixteen. Um, and I, and I tell her and all of her friends to read it. I started reading it probably when I was twelve or thirteen or something, and literally have read it almost every year since. Um, and but what I'm reading right now that's just blowing my mind is the Master Key System. It's a quick read on one hand, but it's actually, it's, it's almost like a, like a textbook. It's like a course. And, um, I treat it as such. So I'm really only doing uh, a chapter a week in the book and, um, and I'm rereading it every week at the same chapter, probably a couple of times. And just, I'm learning so much about, uh, manifestation and the universe and just the, just the the how the world is just is here for you you know the universe is totally here for you on so many in so many ways and it's just be, it's a beautiful uh it's a beautiful read and it's a beautiful uh, it's o- og manifestation it is og manifest <laughs> exactly i'd love to share a quote that i just turned to in the master key system that it just of course has to echo what we talked about today Insight is a product of the world within and is developed in the silence by concentration. Mm-hmm. Making that space. Yes. So good. Naya, thank you so much for taking the time to be here with us. It's just um, such a joy to be in your presence. And you guys, you need to go follow Naya. You need to go listen to Stay Real Music. You need to get uh, get these downloads as they come out. Go listen to catching sunlight. Go listen to all my sisters. And Naya, thank you so much for taking this time with us. We just love you. and we appreciate You are illuminating. Oh, I love you guys so much. <laughs> um, so don't forget to follow her, stay connected. And if you guys enjoyed the episode, please subscribe, share it on your social channels, leave us a review because you know that we're showing up every weekly, dropping them gems so that you can thrive daily. We'll catch you guys in the next episode. Thanks for being here. Adios. Thank you guys so much for hanging out with us today on another episode of Rise to Thrive podcast. We are so stoked that you're here. If you love today's episode, if it helped you, please share it with a friend, snap a screenshot, tag us on stories at Rise to Thrive podcast, or head to iTunes or Spotify and leave us an honest review. We love you guys. We appreciate you. And until next time, keep rising, keep thriving. See you next time.